This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at ethics, because ethics is important because it applies right the way across all of the papers that, that you do, whether it's here at your operations level, management level or your strategy level. OK, and I think it's a good area that could get examined, particularly with regards to your case study at the end of each level. OK, is there an ethical issue that you identify that you need to go through there and address? OK, uh, so essentially ethics, make sure that we apply the accounting standards, whether they're local or international, and apply them in, in a manner that ensures that they are, if you like, materially correct. OK, there, there is no, if you like, uh, deliberate misstating of the accounts uh, to try and mislead the shareholders. OK, so what we've got there is we, we have a code of ethics, which, which ensures there that the, the application of the standards is upheld and, and that the, the preparers are operating professionally. OK. So you have a code of ethics. Uh, so we have a SEMA code of ethics. Uh, whereabouts does that come from? Uh, it's just a bit of background more than anything else. I think originally it would have gone through there, looked at early principles and would have come from religious ideas and religious beliefs uh, because, you know, religion was was probably there at the, at the start of time. OK, if that makes sense. It depends upon what you believe, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, religious beliefs it will have originally dictated ethics and how people behaved. Uh, and then as that developed, then then things would have become, if you like, a little bit more defined by law, OK, as opposed to what people believe was right and what people then believe was wrong. OK, uh, and that was then defined on law, I suppose, then that was based upon your religious beliefs, wasn't it? OK, uh, things have then began to change and develop. Uh, obviously, religion is obviously still important in, in more, if you like, places in the world than others. Uh, but, but but things tend to have moved on in other worlds uh, away from religion. So things that tend to dictate ethics now are, if you like, your your social attitude. So do be aware different countries have different social attitudes to how ethics operates. You know, what may be seen in one country uh, as a thank you uh, might be seen as an ethical dilemma uh, because you're taking a gift off somebody that is deemed inappropriate. OK, uh, so ethical principles will vary across borders uh, and then our social attitudes change what then happened is business has developed hasn't it so more recently businesses have sort of had an influence on how ethics and the code of ethics is developed uh, and then if you like the professional bodies are, are, are the most recent and they have developed their own codes uh, to apply to make sure that the things are a little bit more tailored and specific to the needs of, of the preparers of the accounts okay uh, ethics we are looking at it from an accounting perspective but but ethics can can, can fall into to any particular category or any way or walk of life okay uh, we're looking at it purely from a business and an accounting perspective so what you've got there bits and pieces to go through there and note and observe uh, so SEMA uh, is a member of the International Federation of Accountants, so IFAC, uh, which also has the ICAW, so the Institute of Chartered Accountants in International England and Wales. Uh, is it the, the Chartered Accountants of Scotland, Chartered Accountants of Ireland and, and other international accounting groups? Uh, and what they have gone through and done is they have gone through and developed not only just high quality, because if it's a professional set of ethical standards, but also principles based so it's not focusing upon rules it's establishing a framework if you like we're establishing guidelines okay uh, because then people can interpret the guidelines in their own particular way uh, but it should be that the majority of people interpret them then in in, in the same way okay uh, what you've then got there is ifac they've established an ethics committee uh, so, again, you may need to, to learn what these acronyms stand for. So IFAC and IESBA, uh, which is the International Ethics Standards Board of Accountants. OK, uh, they've developed the framework and then it tends to be that all the members of the Federation of Accountants will have adopted those principles OK, or use them, if you like, as a, 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 a framework OK, and adapted it based upon local laws based upon local social attitudes and, and maybe religious ideas as well. OK, uh, particularly in the Islamic world, I suppose. Uh, so what we've got there, you need to go through, don't we? And we need to learn. 
uh, what those fundamental principles are within the code of ethics. Uh, so in any business decision, in any accounting decision, you should be operating with integrity, objectivity, professional care and due care, or professional competence and due care, confidentiality, and is it their professional behaviour? Okay, uh, there we go. So if you like, I think uh, in various books and textbooks, I, I think you go through there and see, is it PICO? Uh, again, it, it's up to you. Uh, so the P uh, stands for, is it your professional behaviour? Uh, I is integrity. Uh, C is confidentiality. The second C is competence and due care. And then the O is there as the objectivity. It's fine, isn't it? Okay. Uh, to learn those won't take too long. The issue is what do they all mean? What do they all stand for? Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is, first of all, your integrity. Uh, integrity is all about being straightforward and honest. Okay. And that implies the fair dealing and truthfulness. So essentially it's saying straightforward and honesty is, you know, don't do anything dishonest. I know that sounds daft, but, you know, uh, be fair. Uh, if you see something is wrong, say that it is wrong. OK, don't go through there and decide, well, it's wrong, but I'm not going to do anything about it. OK, you need to operate with integrity. OK, uh, so it says there, don't be associated with anything that contains something that is false or misleading. OK, so if it's wrong, say it's wrong. Don't go along with it. OK, uh, if it's been uh, information that's been gathered recklessly. So, you know, maybe you shouldn't have access to it, but by chance you do. Don't take any of that information on board. You are not acting with integrity. Uh, and again, if something is omitted deliberately, uh, then don't go through there and put your name to it. Make sure that it is included. OK, so integrity is all about honesty. OK, faith, fairness and, and straightforwardness. Uh, if you're going through there and looking at is it objectivity, uh, you're not allowing any bias, conflict of interest or any undue influence. OK, you need to think by yourself. Don't be. Uh, persuaded by maybe you're offered a bonus if your profits reach a particular level okay and therefore you manipulate those profits you are not therefore being objective okay you are operating if you like with bias uh, towards your own if you like interests okay uh, so therefore that's going through and looking if you like a little bit at the world of objectivity do not allow any undue influence bias or a conflict of interest okay uh, when you're looking there at competence and due care, again, I, I think a lot of it is is more about common sense, isn't it? So that's the maintaining your professional knowledge and skill at the required level. OK, so as accounting standards develop, you will need to update your knowledge of the accounting standard to show that you are applying the most up to date, relevant rules. If not, you are not acting with professional competence or any due care. So that's why you have uh, your continued professional developments uh, that follows once you graduate uh, and qualify, if you like, with SEMA. OK, uh, again, likewise, it goes on there to say that you should act diligently and in, in accordance with applicable technical and professional standards. So that's going through there and ensuring that you apply with the rules of the accounting standards. Uh, the frameworks, if that is necessary, and local company law. OK, uh, confidentiality. Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, you should respect the confidentiality uh, of any information acquired, particularly if you're working with a listed business. Now, if you're working with a listed business and you become privy to some information, don't disclose that or divulge it anywhere else. OK, uh, if you do. Now, that could be considered maybe as insider dealing or insider dealing, I say, if you decide to give somebody that information and they can make gains on the stock market. OK, so be careful with the information that you have. Check whether or not it is confidential. And if it is, do not disclose it. OK, uh, and then professional behaviour is that you need to comply with the relevant laws. And regulations uh, and avoid any action that discredits the profession. OK, uh, so we'll talk a little bit later about the cooperative group in the UK 
uh, which is where we talk about in corporate governance in chapter three. Uh, one of their directors, well, CEO uh, of the business, uh, acted in a, in a very non-professional manner. Okay, and that then resulted with him uh, being asked to leave and, and move on elsewhere. Now, you need to respect your your institution and uphold the beliefs that they have uh, to, to the utmost and, and do nothing to try and discredit it. Don't do anything stupid, so to speak. OK, uh, I'll let you think about what is and what isn't stupid outside of your working environment. Uh, so it's a simple example that you've got there. And again, this is taken from a past exam question uh, under the old syllabus. Uh, which one of the following is not a fundamental principle? So keep it there that it is not. So the fundamental principles are PICO, aren't they? Uh, is it professionalism, integrity, confidentiality, competence and due care and objectivity? Uh, if you go through and work through those, uh, the I stands for integrity. It does not stand for independence. Uh, so therefore, that is the correct answer. That is not a fundamental principle. OK, excellent. Uh, just to go through and finish it off, as well as thinking about the ethical principles that we have, uh, we also have the five threats to your ethical behaviour. OK, so you know what the ethical standards are, you know what they say. But what could arise as an issue that, that, that may be pushing you to break one of those, if you like, principles. Uh, first one there is a self-interest threat. Uh, so what you've got there is maybe there is a conflict of interest. OK, that conflict of interest may lead you, if you like, to operate with it with a lack of integrity or maybe a lack of objectivity. OK. Uh, so you need to go through that. Uh, I think we spoke before, didn't we, about profitability. Your role was to try and increase profitability. Uh, and maybe there we, we decided and said, well, you know, you might manipulate the accounts to make sure that those profit levels are achieved. Uh, well, that gives you a self-interest threat, doesn't it? Because by achieving those profits, you will then maybe get a bonus, a promotion. So you're acting in your own personal interest. So that threat to your integrity uh, is a self-interest threat. Uh, likewise, as opposed to self-interest is a self-review threat. There's no conflict of interest, but you are the evaluating the results of a previous judgment or service. So quite important with regards to audit and tax. It's saying there that you've performed the work. So you've done the audit on a particular accounting balance and then you review it. OK. Now, that's a self-review threat, isn't it? Because if you're reviewing your own work, how do you think you would say that you've done pretty well? OK, you wouldn't be there trying to spot the errors. I'm brilliant. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah, all done perfect. OK, so that's a self-review threat. Similarly, there in tax, you're a tax accountant. You prepared the, the tax computation. Somebody else should review it and not yourself because that self-review threat then leads to a lack of professionalism, doesn't it? A professional competence, OK? And if you like, there's a lack there of due care to the rules and the regulations that apply, OK? Uh, you've then got there, is it an advocacy threat, OK? Uh, key bit there is that is when your objectivity uh, is compromised, OK? So if you go back there and start to think, is it about your objectivity? Uh, that's where you're, if you like, pressured into performing a particular role or pressured into preparing a set of accounts that may be misleading. OK, so that there is an advocacy threat. OK, uh, what you've then got as well is your familiarity. Uh, so that's whereby there with your familiarity, you have, if you like, too close a relationship. You know, we spoke, didn't we, not so long ago there about how ethical principles are derived. Uh, and how you're looking at how things are derived. Was it there? Did we phrase it from a, from a social attitude perspective? Uh, so, you know, by offering gifts, that may be seen as, as, as fine in one social environment, but not so much in another. Because if you continue to offer gifts, then, then, then you begin to maybe get too familiar. Uh, and therefore, that poses a threat to your ethical principles, doesn't it? You know, maybe it reduces your objectivity. OK, 
because there might be a little bit of bias towards that person then who's provided the gifts. Uh, could be, if you like, maybe a lack of integrity and maybe the decisions that, that you take there uh, go through, if you like, uh, and start to go through there and are not so fair, are they? Okay. Uh, the, the biggest threat, I suppose, as well, at the end, is, is intimidation. Okay. Doesn't have to physically have been somebody confronting you in your face uh, in terms of an actual level of intimidation. It could also be something that is perceived. So the way somebody does something in their day to day business makes you feel intimidated and threatened. And therefore you begin to act maybe with a little bit less objectivity, with a little bit of, of uh, lack of professional competence, okay? You're, you're a little bit intimidated by what is happening, okay? You begin to do things that are not at your level of qualification, okay? That is not being competent, is it, okay? So bear in mind, you need to learn those threats and what each of them relates to. I think intimidation, familiarity, advocacy are all clear. Uh, be careful with the self-interest and the self-review. People tend to get those the wrong way around. Self-interest leads to a conflict of interest. Self-review is where you are reviewing something that you have previously done yourself. Okay. What I would do is have a go at some of the questions. If you get them all right, brilliant. If you don't get them right, just have a flick through the study text of your particular tuition provider that you've chosen uh, and just work through the detail because it does get just a little bit dull a little bit dry i just tried to go through there and cover the essentials the basics pardon the pun the fundamentals of what you need to know for the exam questions other than that i'll see you in the next video when we go through to look at regulatory bodies